Hey guys, Coach Albo here and today I'm going to give you my tier list as a top 100 tank player for the best and worst tank heroes that you should start playing in order to climb. Check out our website gameleap.com where we release hundreds of in-depth guides created by some of the highest ranked players in the world. Our courses are much more in-depth than anything you'll find on YouTube and I highly recommend you get the membership right now. Click on the link in the description and sign up now. This tier list is going to be ranked on three main factors. Number one, how easily the average player can extract value from the hero. So in other words, how easy the hero is to perform well on and how much of an impact you can have without having to master the hero's tech before you can have a good impact. Number two is how well the hero is able to solo carry a game and how easily they can be countered. So how easily you could be shut down. The final thing I'll be taking into account is the current power level of these heroes as it can change how easy it is to get value on a hero. But the current meta does not really matter and you can play any hero to get to any rank and some of you may have seen that Mira somehow got rank 1 on Doomfist of all heroes. So kicking off the tier list and starting with D tier, in my opinion the worst tanks to climb with and first we have Wrecking Ball. The biggest reason I put Ball last despite him being my favourite hero is because Wrecking Ball takes a disproportionate amount of time to learn and get any meaningful value from where there are just much easier heroes to pick up and play that can do his job just as well if not better in the current state of the game. Game. On the plus side however, Ball, when learnt properly, can be very useful as he can do things other tanks simply are incapable of doing, such as getting in and out extremely quickly and safely when compared to other tanks, often drawing out a lot of resources from the enemy, such as Sleep Dart or Moira Fade. However, with this fast in and out playstyle, it often requires a large amount of game sense and mechanics to perform well on the hero without needing a large amount of support from your team, which is not typically available in the lower ranks. Furthermore, Sombra is currently very strong and her pick rate is moderately high if you do happen to perform well in low ranked games you can 100% expect the enemy team just to pick Sombra and end your game. The next hero in D tier is going to be Doomfist. Although also in D tier I believe Doomfist may be slightly better than Ball that's probably up for debate but the issue with Doomfist along with Ball is that there are always a hundred different techs that are usually pretty difficult to learn and implement in game. A quick side note for those who don't know a tech is like a hero specific mechanic such as Wrecking Ball's Wall Bounce or Genji's Ghost Dash, which are usually very difficult to implement but can help you gain a slight advantage in game. Whilst these techs are not super important, they definitely make a difference. Doomfist's playstyle is not easy to pick up and play, and whilst he has good sustainability across all ranks, it is difficult to have an impact on a game that wouldn't have just been easier on another hero. So, moving up a tier, getting into the C tier, and these heroes, I believe, they're not bad, they're definitely playable, especially in most situations. You could pull this hero out and it'll be completely fine. The main issue is, someone else just does their job a bit better and the first hero we're gonna have in C tier is gonna be Junker Queen. Whilst Junker Queen can actually be a pretty decent hero, she has good damage, a good ultimate, her shout is an impactful ability that's easy to use, it's easy to get value from, her knife also adds a skill shot to her kit which means you have the capability to make some plays and in my opinion the hero is not that hard to pick up and play. However the main problem with Junker Queen is that there are other tanks that just do her job better. For example Ryan and Zarya have more point present than Junker Queen. They'll beat Junker Queen in a brawl. Roadhog has better self-sustain. Sigma and Arissa will spam out a Junker Queen. She's not awful and she can do most roles decently, but there are other heroes that just cover her strengths better. The next hero in C tier is Arissa. Now, I think Arissa is substantially better than Junker Queen and I was debating putting Arissa in B tier, but I think she just falls short of the other heroes in B tier. She has pretty good survivability, a decent ranged capability. Arissa is also another hero that has quite a low skill floor and you can get value pretty pretty easily. You don't have to master anything on Orissa, you can just pick up and play Orissa. For players looking to climb however, I would just simply recommend other heroes than Orissa. But if you like Orissa or you find success, then by no means would I advise switching off her or dumping her from your hero pool. Some maps can actually favour Orissa, such as Elios Well in my opinion. It has a small chance of a boop with Javelin and her Javelin Spin, which may not actually result in boops, but it requires the enemy to be wary and means you have more point presence and map control. Furthermore, the fights on Elios Well can easily easily switch between spam matchups and brawl matchups which Arissa can perform quite well in both of these types of fights with her long range damage and good survivability with fortify. And getting into B tier we have Sigma. A shield in low ranks provides so much value as your teammates actually know how to play with the shield whereas people often struggle playing without a shield and it provides a layer of security and survivability. Sigma 
Jordan's kit in general is a perfect mix of easy value with a high skill ceiling. His ult is fantastic and easy to use to engage with, and his rock is an amazing skill shot with the potential to cancel ultimate, giving you a very large carry potential and is very good in 1v1s versus squishy DPS, as they can be comboed with a simple primary fire and melee. Overall, I think this puts Sigma in a strong position. His main flaw is that with Overwatch 2 being much faster paced than Overwatch 1, he doesn't have the mobility nor the survivability that other tanks have to survive. The next hero in B tier is D.Va. With the changes to defense matrix, giving her a 3 second matrix is much more forgiving than in Overwatch 1. This means she's even easier to get value from and her skill floor has been lowered even more. Her matrix is extremely strong and has a high potential with being able to eat ultimates, giving you very large carry potential. D.Va also has a very high health pool and good close to range damage. In the current state of the game, this means she's very hard to kill and has good mobility to get a kill quickly with micro missiles and then get out again. Furthermore, D.Va is one of the hardest tanks to kill and if you do lose your mech, your mech now comes back even faster in Overwatch 2 and from experience, unless you're extremely out of position, it is very easy to get your mech back. Okay, and getting into the final hero in B tier is going to be Reinhardt, a staple hero for all tank players and is always a decent hero for a few reasons. The biggest reason, I believe, is that everyone knows how to play with a Ryan on their team. All your teammates know that they can use your shield and you instantly get value because of that. Ryan also has a good point present as he is strong in close spaces and brawls. His kit is simple and can be easily picked up by any new tank players which makes him good to rank up with. Where Ryan tends to fall down is that you can't solo carry games as well as you can on other heroes. By all means, you can definitely have a very large impact in carry, but you don't have the same impact as you do on a hero like Zarya, where you can quite literally out DPS any other player in the game. Or even Roadhog, that has an ability to just hook and one-shot someone every single fight. And on that note, the first hero in A tier is gonna be Roadhog. Roadhog is good in all ranks, but specifically low ranks because of his potential to one-shot. Even if you don't hit the hook, the chance is always there, and the enemy team have to respect that, or else eventually someone is gonna get hooked. To explain further, if a Roadhog is flanking, a lot of the time the other team will have to move away from the side he is flanking on because of the fear of being hooked. This means that Roadhog can create space and obtain map control simply by existing. He doesn't actually have to hit these hooks. This then paired with the ability to one-shot squishy heroes and his self-heal make for a very good hard carry hero that is completely self-sufficient and requires literally no team involvement and is very good hero for wanting to rank up without relying on your team. The final hero in A tier is going to be Winston. Now, I believe Winston is actually pretty difficult to play correctly. His skill floor is definitely not as low as Roadhog or D.Va, but not ridiculously high like Doomfist or Ball. So after some practice, Winston can definitely get substantial value by shutting down flankers, taking high ground, and having good mobility. Winston does require good ability management, and it's not as simple as just taking down or putting your shield up whenever you want. The bubble has a decently long cooldown, so when you use it, you must get value out of it, or be sure that you won't need it again for 12 seconds. Winston is currently very powerful, as he can dive targets very quickly, and with his mobility, it allows him to escape dangerous situations. Another reason Winston is very powerful at the moment is because he is a very good counter to Zarya, as she struggles versus Winston's dive playstyle, who can engage Zarya whenever he chooses, use bubble, and then disengage without the Zarya being able to do anything to stop him. To quickly expand on this point, there is a triangle of counters between these three tanks. Winston counters Zarya, D.Va counters Winston, and Zarya counters D.Va. This is not to say you can't win playing Winston into D.Va, but they are more just light counters. Okay, and getting into the only S tier hero everyone knows, the best tank in the game currently, and the best tank to rank up with is Zarya. In my personal opinion, Zarya has always been the number one hero to rank up with from day one of Overwatch. Her kit is perfect perfect for learning the game and helping out teammates and yourself whilst having insane carry potential. Zarya's bubbles allow her to help out with feeding teammates, saving them from being picked or helping them win 1v1s which can be so impactful especially at lower ranks where your teammates need that helping hand to win their duels or find themselves constantly out of position. This being said, Zarya's bubbles are now best used on yourself when possible to take space, not to get charged. I can make a more in-depth video on this in the future but her bubbles should be used as a safety net allowing you to push further than you should and then once the enemies start trying to push you back then you bubble yourself. A high charge Zarya can obliterate anyone in the game and her bubbles can stop entire ult combos not to mention Graviton Surge is probably one of the most consistent team wiping ultimates in the entire game. And that concludes the list. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe and check out the Game Leap website for more in-depth courses and I'll see you in the next video.